Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial and today we're going to be going over the principled shader. Really quickly, we'll explain what that is. It's a shader that compacts every shader into one simple shader. So you can have let's see, 12 dozen shaders in one material to create some awesome look. But you're not so happy with it and you want to edit something. It takes forever to go through all of those simple one little, that one little shader. It takes so long to find it. So this is the solution for that. This is the principled BSDF. It's a shader that, again, compacts every shader into one. So as you can see, we have like subsurf, we have metallic, we have specular, we have roughness, we have sheen, clear coat, IOR, normal maps. All of that stuff into one simple shader. I'll explain more about this later, but really quickly I'll show you guys a simple render of material and what it can do. Now this is the principal shader without changing anything. Anything at all. This is the very basic principal shader. It almost looks like a ceramic type look, okay? So that is that. Now we're going to go ahead and get into the tutorial and in this tutorial I'll kind of be really just focusing on the main thing that this shader does and that is adding Fresnel. So I'll kind of be focusing on that, kind of explaining what that is. So um, yeah, if you want to skip to using the actual shader and knowing kind of what it does, then link right here. A pop-up will open right here, and you guys can go ahead and skip to that. So before we can use the principal shader, and, I, uh, and before I can explain what it really does, we need to understand what makes a material look realistic, okay? So this is a very basic cycles material here, a glossy, a diffuse, and a mix shader. Now this is not a realistic material, and you may say, well that looks fairly realistic to me. Well no, it doesn't, part of it's the lighting and all that stuff, but if you had all of that perfect, this would still not be a realistic material. This is not what a material really is in real life, okay? And why is that? Well, that's because we don't have something called Fresnel. All right, so what is Fresnel? A very, very, very basic explanation of this is if you go to the lake. It's a very easy explanation. Go to the lake and look down. Closer the water is to you, the more you can see through it. And as you can see, we can see the bottom of the lake here. But the farther away we get, we can't see it through the bottom of it. Now, all right, so now that you kind of know what Fresnel is, kind of a little bit, this is a little bit of an explanation for that, we can actually add this. So if we add this to our shader, Fresnel, there we go, add this in, it looks something like this. Now, this is still a material that has one, two, three, four nodes, and if you have a bunch of image textures and normal maps and all that stuff, then it's going to get a little complicated. Now, this is where the principled shader actually comes in. We can actually delete all of these things and add the principled BSDF. Add that in, and this takes account for the Fresnel effect, or I'll call it the Fresnel effect, but that's really not what it's called, but that's okay. This takes account for a Fresnel. All right, so what else does this have? Really quickly, I'll show you guys what this looks like and what this looks like. They're the same thing, but different colors. See, all in one. So now I'm gonna show you guys a couple of the other things that are that is added to this. So let's go ahead and go into the 3D view. So let's go ahead and get into some of these other things. Um, we're gonna start with the metallic setting right here. Um, basically, the metallic setting creates a metal-type specularity off of it. So if you have no specularity right here, if you turn that all the way down, but turn the uh, metallic all the way up, as you can see, the Fresnel that we had on this shader completely turns off, and it looks like the first one we had. As you can see, it looks exactly like the first one we had. That is what the metallic shader does. I guess it turns off that a bit. And it also makes it look a little bit more like metal. So as you can see, this looks like a lot like um, a metal or plastic or something like that. So we can go ahead and escape that. 
All right, so roughness, that changes a lot of the settings here. So the roughness, the higher it is, the, um, the rougher it looks. So you can even add a texture, image texture to this, that way it looks a little bit grungier, or, um, or maybe some places are more dirtier than others, something like that. That definitely could be added with this roughness texture. Black and white texture added to that, and it will, it'll create that awesome effect. So let's turn that all the way up, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. And as you can see, there's like no glossiness to this at all, okay? So metallic all the way down, specularity all the way up, something like that. Specularity tint, all of this stuff, all the way up. And as you can see, there is still no specularity off of this because our roughness is all the way up. Turn it all the way down. And you can see it's definitely a bit glossier. Looks almost like glass now, which is kind of cool. It looks like a tune shader, so you can even create tune shaders with this. I was gonna get into that later, but clearly this is this has changed that. All right, so we can turn these back to normal here. Zero on the metallic. There we go. So what is anisotropic? Anisotropic. Pretty sure that's how you say it. Basically, let's turn that all the way up and render this. Kind of just looks like it uh, doesn't do too, too much, but it's still there. Now, Sheen, this basically makes it look like fabric. So we turn that all the way up. Kind of makes it look a little bit like fabric. Basically for, for fabric and all that. Clear coat, turn that all the way up, and you guys will be able to see that this is exactly what it sounds like, clear coat. Basically... Yes, you can see. It looks pretty cool. It looks very uh, clean and shiny. That's what that's supposed to make it look like. And that is pretty awesome. So the subsurf, we turn that all the way up. Maybe we'll make it a blue color. And that kind of makes it look like a ghost, honestly. So the reflection that is coming off of it, as you guys can see, the reflection is very bright. And everything else is almost transparent. So that really looks cool. Very, very cool effect there. And you can change all the settings for that too. Now that was a very, very, very basic run through of the principled shader, okay? So you guys can go into more depth later on. I uh, There's another tutorial that I'll link you guys to in the description. It's a very, it's a more in-depth tutorial on how to use this shader. Uh, so that's linked in the description. And this shader is basically a way of compacting every shader into one. Now you may still use other shaders and that's okay. This is used not to be only by itself, but to be used with other things. Basically it compacts it down. That way you don't have to have a billion nodes. You can just have one or two or three, however many you like with this thing. So that is it for this tutorial. Again, more advanced video in the description made by someone else. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.